Well, I hope you all are doing well. Today, as a Jew, I'm going to be going over why Karite Judaism is the truth and why we must only observe the one written Torah of our God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is no oral Torah. And I know this is going to come across as offensive to many people, the Orthodox um, way of practicing Judaism. And, of course, really most Jews in this world, but ultimately we have turned away from the Torah. We have added to Torah. And against Deuteronomy, against God's words, we have added words to God's Torah. So here I'm just going to go over some of the most basic reasons, examples of why the oral Torah is uh, is non-existent, meaning it's not Torah. Meaning, you know, everything you've heard of, such as the Talmud, the Shulchan Aruch, it's all added on. The Zohar, it's all later. And a lot of people are going to consider me a heretic, but here's the thing. I keep Shabbat. I keep the Holy Days. I, I observe the Torah according to the words of God. Now, first I'm going to go over one very big logical reason, um, as far as a scriptural reason. And it's simply that whenever the Torah is used as a reference as the whole body of the Torah as a whole, it's not used in the plural of Torah, meaning that when you have Torah, you're talking about the whole actual Torah given in Mount Sinai. Always in scripture in the Torah it says Torah, this Torah. There's actually one reference in Joshua chapter 8, how the whole Torah was read, but it makes it clear that it was the specific words that was read. There was nothing added. There was no later commandments. There was no later innovations, no later traditions. It was just the commandments of God. The words of God were read. That's what we need to remember. So some basic reasons. First of all, there's the example that the Orthodox like to give that we wouldn't know how to kosher meat or kosher meat. Well, it's a fallacy because actually in Bereshit or Genesis, there's a very specific word of shechita or to slaughter um, given in the reference of the binding of Isaac, meaning that it was already known how to slaughter animals back then. That's a brief example. The commandment is to drain the blood and to pour it on the ground like water. How you do that, I'm not saying it's not important, but to argue that because it's in the Talmud means it's given in Mount Sinai, it's a fallacy. We have to remember the Talmud was written by men, men who made mistakes, and nothing was said, thus saith the Lord. It's, it says in the Talmud things such as in the matter of, thus says this rabbi in the name of the other rabbi. It's it's a fallacy to say this. these words are divine because they're not God's words and God is not speaking. Another example is keeping Shabbat, keeping the Sabbath. Well, the Orthodox say we don't we don't know what work is, so we need to the Talmud to know how. I argue, well, who says? Well, there's examples throughout the Torah scroll of the Israelites resting on the Sabbath. One example is how they wouldn't light a fire. Other examples is when they wouldn't do farm work. There's specific examples like they wouldn't plow on the Sabbath. I mean, it becomes very clear that the whole idea is to not physically do anything strenuous. And there are again, there are examples. Don't do farm work. All the things involving farm work, basically anything where you're breaking up a sweat. You don't do any work. It's the same thing with the holy days when it says do not work on Yom Kippur or do not work on Rosh Hashanah. It's the same idea. Don't do any work. Um, to say we need to have a specific kind of toilet paper on the Sabbath or we can't use hot water, it's it's a fallacy because this, these are not God's words. God said specific things like don't light a fire, don't do anything specific. Like, you know, there's references to not cooking, um, but to say that electricity is the same thing as a fire when, in fact, rabbis actually thought electricity was permissible in the 30s. No, that's adding to Torah. We need to stop that. It's dangerous because look at all the customs that have been added. On Passover, you have people thinking it's a halacha or Jewish law to sell their matzah to a goy or a non-Jew and then buy it back from them at the end of Pesach or Passover. That's a fallacy. It's not true. There's discrepancies about what it classifies as chametz or leavened bread on Passover. Obviously, you know, for example, the Ashkenazim Jews, they don't eat peanut butter. They don't eat rice, as far as I know. But there's, there's different disagreements. It's a fallacy. It's wrong. It's It divides people, even in the same Jewish community. Because imagine one Jewish community with an Ashkenazic Jew and a Sephardic Jew. Obviously, they're going to have disagreements, you know. So as far as the Sabbath, well, it becomes this whole thing where you're stepping on eggshells, including the holy days, where you're worried about breaking it. How are you keeping the Sabbath or Yom Kippur if you're worried about breaking it? If you're worried about the des desecrating the day, then, you know, it, it becomes very complex when people add commandments and say, God said at Mount Sinai to have wine on Shabbat or the Sabbath. God said at Mount Sinai to have three meals after or during the Sabbath. God said at Mount Sinai to have a meal after Yom Kippur. 
this it has to be this size. God said at Mount Sinai that, you know, uh, a sukkah has to be exactly this many rolls. God said this at Mount Sinai that an olive amount of challah on Shabbat is how you can sanctify it. I mean, these are adding things to Torah. There's nothing wrong with saying challah connects me to God, that, you know, the bread the Jews have on the Sabbath. It connects me to God on the Sabbath. Okay. Nothing wrong with saying wine connects me to God on the night of Shabbat, the night of the Sabbath. There's a problem we say these are God's words, this is required. Why? Because there's so many examples of poor Jews and many, many Jews, you know, such as myself, who really just can't afford these things, or they're not in a community where they can have access to these things. So that's the point. Um, some more quick examples. They say we need details, more details about the tzitzit. Well, I say who says? The commandment is to have four, you know, fringes on the corners of your garments. To say how wide it has to be, how long it has to be. Well, God is not saying those words. You could say, well, we don't know that. Well, I could say, I don't know why the sky is blue. Does that mean it's a God commandment in Mount Sinai? I could say, I don't know why piano connects me to God. Is that a commandment in Mount Sinai? And as far as no music on the Sabbath, that's another perfect example. How can you say you're observing the Sabbath if you're if you're following many traditions of men? I mean, in all reality, to say I can't play piano when I'm when that's how I find joy on the Sabbath, when King David would have there's be examples of King David praising God with music on the Sabbath, and you know, throughout Yom Kippur, people I'm I'm guessing would praise God with music, but to say we can't play music, no, it, it's a desecration of God's name to add to his Torah. Um, there's another specific, there's two more ex uh, main examples I'm thinking of. And one is they say, we don't know the vowels of the Torah scroll. Well, the Torah has been read at, you know, congregations, synagogues, through many generations in Jewish communities before there was synagogues. So that's a poor argument right there. And there's also the argument that we need the Hebrew calendar. Again, just because it's in the Talmud doesn't mean it's divine. There was two witnesses, yes, who used to observe the new moon. Now we don't have them. So we need a Hebrew calendar. So what? I argue this. Well, the Chinese have their calendar. The Japanese probably, I'm guessing, have their calendar. You know, Muslims have a calendar. Christians have the Gregorian calendar that we observe in America. Does that make it divine? No, it just means that something kind of the Jews needed to observe the holy days. But does that mean it's the Talmud's divine just because it has that information? No, absolutely not. It's a desecration of God's name to add to his commandments and to say we need the Talmud when it's not divine. And one final thing I'll go over. Two things, actually. One, there's contradictions upon contradictions in the Talmud, including later works. And two, when people say a word of Rashi or the Rambam or whatever, his divine is adding to Torah. And I want to make this very clear. Make no mistake, the Shulchan Aruch, including many works, were written literally hundreds of years ago. How can an individual who is Jewish and claims to believe in God say that these are God's words given in Mount Sinai? Oh, Rashi is something we need to study every week because it's given in Mount Sinai. Really? You're going to take the words of Rashi over the words of God? That's what we need to stop. There's one Torah given at Mount Sinai. Keeping the Sabbath is, is easy. It's in our hearts, as God says. Keeping the holy days are easy. It's something we need to do. There's one Torah, the Torah Shabbat Chetab, the written Torah. There's no Torah Shabbat Alpe, there's no oral Torah. And that's why, as Jews, we must turn back to the truth of observing one Torah. Yes, I mean, call it whatever you want, the rabbinical calendar. In reality, it's just a calendar that, you know, the, the same days we would have if we observed the new moon. The only difference is it's on paper. In reality, you can think of, like this, of it like this. The Talmud has things that can have some good ideas, but again, these are not God's words. There's contradiction upon contradiction, rabbis disagreeing with each other, and reason obviously concludes if they're having opposing opinions, then one of them is wrong. You can't say one rabbi thinks this is permitted on Shabbat, another rabbi thinks it's not. These are both the words of the living God. It's, as it actually does say in the Talmud, no, it's not true. Keeping the Sabbath is easy, easy again. Keeping the holy days are easy. And in order to do these things to the best extent possible, we need to just follow God's words. And that's the the, the five books of Moses, the, the Sefer Torah, the Torah scroll. There's the prophets, which God references in the Sefer Torah that we'll need. And also the writings, which also have certain important prophets that give us, you know, um, ideas for how we should be living as Jews. But I've, all those are given in Mount Sinai. God does give um, references of prophets in the Torah scroll. But to say that a later work, 700 years later, is God's words? No, it is, it is you are desecrating by God, God's name by doing that. You, you need to stop whoever is doing that. Meaning, obviously, unfortunately, most Jewish people today, and this is not an attack, it's just um, I care about people. I want to see people um, observing the truth. So thank you very much. And, um, and I actually, I want to kind of conclude with just some 
certain traditions that really show and prove that the oral Torah is not poor. So one example, you see in Orthodox communities how the women are not welcome at synagogues that much. And this is actually true. A, a lot of synagogues, they don't encourage women to go. It's brought down in certain things they consider Jewish law when really it's not. There's other examples of how women have to wear this color clothing. Um, they don't, obviously, they don't fit in. You know, obviously schools, you know, the or segregate with men and women, or I should say boys and girls, um, you're not supposed to talk with a woman, you're not supposed to shake hands with a woman. Here's the thing we got to ask ourselves. If these things were given in Mount Sinai as halach or Jewish law, don't you think God would have said that, specifically in the Ten Commandments? And to say that, you know, things like, um, you know, um, wasting seed or, you know, um, thinking immoral images is going to send you to an eternal hell when these are, again, things that came way later. It's desecrating God's name. It's adding the Torah. We have to stop that. We have to turn to the Torah. What does the Torah say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Keep the commandments, such as the Sabbath, Shabbat, and the holy days. And the rest is explanatory. And even as Rabbi Hillel said, the rest is commentary. The idea is not to follow tradition. That's not what brings us together. The idea is to follow clear commandments of God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Be kind to your fellow Jew and, your, and kind to your fellow righteous individual. And as soon as we do these things, which will be much, much easier if we just observe the written Torah, we will be closer to God. May it be right now. Shalom Aleichem and um, God bless you all. Have a great night and a great rest of your week. Bye.